actually showing 1997 Yamaha VMAX SX700. Uh, I haven't started this in about six years and I'm gonna go ahead and try and start this. Of course, I drained the carburetors, I drained the fuel tank, so I have to fill it with, um, fill it with fuel to get it started. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I hope I can get this started without too much trouble. I cleaned out the carburetors before I put it away six years ago. Um, so let's go through the motions and see how easily I can start this. Now the hard part about this snowmobile, it is a pull start, it does not have electric start, it has three carburetors so the pull start is really tough to pull and get it started. Before you do anything else on trying to start something, you need to check the spark plugs. So I'm going to open up the hood. What you're looking at is the actual engine. This, this whole piece is the engine, there's three spark plugs right here and um, most snowmobiles uh, I'm not sure about the later snowmobiles, but at least the older ones, about 20 to 30 years old, had two cylinders. This is a unique sled and it was made as a power race sled and it was designed for racing actually. And uh, this has three cylinders in it, which makes it a lot harder to pull start. Before you do anything else, you need to loosen up the spark plugs and look at the spark plugs and make sure the spark plugs are clean. Um, before you even start it, you know, clean and gapped right. This right here is the carburetors which supply the engine with the engine here with the fuel and fuel and air mixture and the air comes in through this box over here into the carburetors and the fuel comes into the carburetors. I replace the fuel lines here. Hopefully there'll be no issues with the fuel line and um, in starting this up and running it. There is an oil tank where you pour the oil into. Uh, I'm pointing to it right here. You need to make sure that there's oil in this um, in this tank because there's a fuel injected fuel oil injected snowmobile. The oil burns in the engine, and you need to make sure that there's no lack of oil going into the engine because you will kill the engine or destroy the engine if you don't have oil in this little container here. So, so I I just checked it. There's oil in there. One of the first things I do is I pull the toolbox, which is in the back of the snowmobile. Um, there's a little toolbox I have here that comes with every snowmobile should have a toolbox. I actually take out the the spark plug wrench that you can see here and make sure it fits the spark plugs. Make sure you when you pull the spark plugs cable off these, you keep it in the certain location. Like this one goes to the left, this one goes to the middle, and this one goes to the right. Make sure you don't get it mixed up because then the firing order is going to change. I kept this loose when I took uh, put it in storage the last time so I can remove these easily. It should be hand, hand removable. So I'm going to remove this, I'm going to remove that. You want to avoid putting your tools anywhere in this area because once it falls in between the engine, you're never going to find it. So let's take the first one out. So this one looks pretty clean to me. You can see the spark plug is pretty clean already. And I'm just going to check the gap on it with a gap gauge to make sure the gap is correct. So to check the gap between the t uh, negative terminal and the positive terminal underneath, I have a little shim gauge. I take the 0.63, I put it with the 0.10 to give me 0.73 and then I try to put it within the, um, in here and see if it goes in. But you want to make, make sure that it's not loose, it has to be kind of tight. So this seems kind of loose to me right now, so I'm going to press this in with a screwdriver. So I'm using a screwdriver, slightly press down on this. You just have to be careful. If you use too much force, you could actually break this. I would recommend getting the spark plug tool to actually make the gap or uh, make the gap bigger or smaller. Um, in this case, I'm actually using a screwdriver to push down. So let's check that again. Still seems kind of loose to me. So let me do that one more time. Okay, this should be good. So for now, you don't want to tighten these 
after you get the gaps adjusted. You don't want to tighten these, just leave it loose. I'll explain why later. Take the next one out. And make sure that if you leave this open for extended period of, periods of time, to put something over it so no debris gets into the engine. That could definitely damage your engine, you know, dust. Um, dust and debris blowing into the engine cylinders. You don't want that. So we're going to check this one too. And then do the same thing on the last spark plus. Same gapping technique on the other one. I'm actually ready to, I had to drain like, um, I had to drain gas from this tank uh, about a gallon, a uh, gallon or two. So I'm going to put the new gas in. And before you actually do that, you want to make sure that the uh, that the uh, uh, garage, if you're working in a garage, the garage is open. So the next step is also important, you know, um, after you fill in the gas and close the uh, cap on the gas tank, you need to remove the spark plug. So, I'm going to remove the spark plugs and I'll explain shortly the reason you want to remove the spark plugs is it's harder to pull, it's easier to pull the cord to start it when you have the spark plugs removed but you're not going to start it. What you're basically doing is you want to fill the carburetors with uh, fuel. So you're removing this to make it easier for you to prime the pump and move from the gas tank into the carburetors to fuel. And that's the whole goal of this, this part of the exercise. Okay. It takes a while to get this done. The next thing I'm going to do is put the spark plugs back on. spark plug wires back on. I have like rollers underneath. I'm going to have to remove the rollers. I'm going to have to do the same thing on the other side. Today's snowmobiles all have electric start. But this one's an older one, it's about 22 years old. And this is the pull cord I got used to start it with. I gotta pull on this. It's a lot of force I have to use. I guess it's been sitting for six years. So that's part of the reason. I wonder if I need to get some oil in here. Squirt some oil and see if that helps. a little bit of oil, not much. I would say a little bit of a cap full of uh, 1040 oil or any oil that you have that's that you use as motor oil, a little bit of that. Or if you have an actual fogging oil you can spray in here that would be even better. Make sure you turn off the choke when you do this. Because you don't want more gas coming into the cylinder. Let's try pull starting it some more. Okay, I'm gonna have to remove the spark plugs one more time. There's excess gas in there. You wanna get rid of it. So on all three spark plugs, I'm actually gonna clean it uh, just to make sure if there's oil residue, it's not preventing the spark from firing up uh, the fuel. Put the second one here. There's a fuel valve. You know, many times when you're trailering this thing, you turn it off. But when you want to run the snowmobile, you have to turn it back on. There have been many times I've left this turned off, and I try to start the snowmobile, the thing won't start. And then finally I realize, oops, I gotta turn it to the on position. Some wild 
residue here, which I'm going to wipe off. There's some carbon on the tip of the spark plugs, which I'm going to use sandpaper to clean out and see if that helps. So I have a little piece of sandpaper here. So one of the next things I'm going to check and make sure that each spark plug is getting a spark. I'm going to hook up, I'm going to hook up all the spark plugs. So here I'm going to try and see if I can see sparks uh, coming at the end when I pull the starter cable. You should be able to see blue sparks. After repeated attempts to start the snowmobile, if it's not starting, you know, you check for a spark. If you don't get a spark, then you check to see if the spark plug is getting fuel on it. And I'm going to show you right now, this is getting fuel on it. Um, it's kind of hard to see this, but there is signs of fuel getting to the spark plug. You can kind of see it's kind of wet on the ends here. So you have to check each spark plug and make sure fuel is getting there. But on this end, I don't see a whole lot of fuel. It could be possible that the carburetors are not supplying enough fuel to the uh, spark plugs. I'm going to try start these, uh, start this a few more times. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to pull out the carburetors and clean it, which is a big monumental task, but I don't have a choice. If the snowmobile is not going to start, I'm going to have to pull the carburetors out. So the smoke you see coming out is perfectly normal, it's a two-stroke engine that burns oil, so you get a lot of smoke. Uh, usually I open up the garage to let the smoke out, but uh, normally you would not fire this up inside a garage. Um, it started up, I just need to start it up again and make sure it warms up properly. 